Hi, everyone. I'm Jess Foster with Atrium Management. This is We're Invested, and my guest today is Erin Emery, all the way visiting from Australia. Hello, Erin. Hi. How Welcome. Are you? Thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, great. Wonderful. Tell us a little bit about um, where you're located in Australia and what the name of your company is called. Uh, so I live in Brisbane in Queensland, sunny Queensland, uh, and my business is called Pulse Property Management Consulting. Really cool. And so how long have you been in real estate and how did you get started? Well, I just did the maths the other day and I've just had my uh, 18th year in April, so this month, um, which is just crazy. <laughs> um, how did I get started? Look, I have a little bit of a unique story, Jess. Um, some would say that I was a bit of a weird kid. So when I was 11 <laughs> years old, uh, we grew up in an area in North Queensland uh, where there was a lot of construction going on around where I lived. My parents had built their house um, probably we'd been there for maybe about six to 12 months and there was still a lot of land being developed and single family homes being built. Uh, and after school, when most other kids would be out playing with their friends or playing, you know, football in the street or whatever it might have been, I was sitting in the gutter outside the front of the house looking at these houses being built and I would draw house plans. Um, and I used to go over to the builders and show them my house plans and they just thought I was the weirdest kid because they're like, <laughs> what are you doing? You know, that's so strange that you're building these house plans or drawing these house plans, but they thought it was cool and, and interesting, but weird at the same time, because it was obviously not something that an 11 year old kid would be interested in. Um, I, I guess I've always been fascinated with property and that's kind of where it stemmed from, um, I went to my first open home when I was, or you know, inspection when I was like 12 years old. Um, the property was listed for sale just around the corner from where we lived. And I knocked on the door and the first thing the agent looked at me and said was, where's your parents? <laughs> <laughs> and I said to her, well, they're, they're at home. We live just around the corner. And, um, and I saw that this property was listed for sale in the newspaper back in the day when we used to advertise in the local paper. Um, and I just loved the design of it. It was a double story, you know, huge four bedroom house with a pool out the backyard. And I just wanted to have a look inside it. So I took myself around and yeah, the agent was really lovely. She was, um, again, a little bit shocked that I was so intrigued and fascinated to come and have a look, but she let me have a look, but she just made me wait until the end of the inspection when everyone else had finished. And, um, yeah, gave me five minutes of her time and showed me through and, and from there, I guess it just kind of developed. And, um, you know, eight years later, I, after working in a cust you know, many customer service roles, um, I decided to combine that passion for property and my customer service experience and took my first job as a property management assistant. So, Wow. So you jumped from, I want to design buildings to, I like how houses are laid out or, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, what, what different styles of houses look like to let me just dive on into property management. Yeah. Well, that's I, crazy. It was a little bit crazy, <laughs> but I didn't really, if I'm being honest, when I graduated high school, I didn't really have the study bone in my body. So I knew that I didn't want to race off and go to university and do a you know, a bachelor or a degree in some type of construction or architecture or anything like that, even though I still loved property, that wasn't me. Um, if I had have left high school and gone straight into that, I would have failed university for sure because I just wasn't ready for more study after 12 years of school. Um, so I'd worked in customer service in retail industry um, but always still had that passion for property, used to always get the local, you know, real estate section of the Saturday newspaper and look through all of the properties for sale. And so I thought, okay, how can I get into property and what would be the, not the easiest way, because I don't want to say that it's an easy to get into the industry, um, although it's not overly difficult. Um, but I thought, okay, what can I do? Where's my stepping stone? How can I get into the industry? And be around property. Um, I didn't want to do sales because I was worried about how it would work in terms of 
the commission um, ratio because in Australia years ago we used to get paid like a salary but then if you sold a house you would get a commission but then anything you'd been paid as your salary would be taken out of that commission mm -hmm. and so you'd get the remaining balance. Mm -hmm. So I thought well you know I needed a fixed type of income or something that was more permanent um, so property management seemed to offer the best of everything in that I could be around property, be meeting people that owned property, um, be providing uh, a solution for tenants that needed a place to live and get to see so many different styles of properties. So I thought, okay, that's it. I'm going to go and do my, my exam and did my study to get my certificate. Um, and yeah, I took my first job working for a, a corporate agency called LJ Hooker in Australia. Um, and I worked for them for about a year. And then I uh, was working in a little cafe with my my mum's best friend, um, Pam. And these other agents came in one day to get their lunch and a coffee from Harcourts. And I got talking to them and told them that, look, this is actually not my full-time job. I'm just helping my auntie out on the weekend. Um, and they said, well, we've actually got a position available as a property management assistant, come and have an interview. And so I interviewed and got the job and started with Harcourts. And um, yeah, the, the rest is kind of history from there. So that's amazing. I love that story. Your passion was building and housing and your opportunity to get into the industry was property management. That's mm. that's just so cool. Mm. Um, okay, so you did property management. You worked for some companies. You did some. Uh, you you shared with me that you actually established your own company. Yes. Uh, about eight years ago. Yes. And that's fantastic. What are you doing now? Okay, so after selling that recently, um, look, I'm taking twelve months off. Although I'm not really having a break, um, I'm one of those people that can never really stop working. Um, so I guess I'm combining the best of both worlds in that I'm having a bit of a, a holiday, but doing a, a property management study tour. Um, five years ago, I um, got taken, I guess, under the wing of someone who's been my biggest influence, which was my mentor, Joanne Oliveri. Um, she's a property management expert of about 30 years experience in Australia. Um, she also does uh, consulting work over here in the United States and I met her many years ago when I was with Harcourts um, and she and I reconnected in 2017 and at that stage I'd been on my own for a year in the business and really flapping my way through. Like obviously I knew a lot about property management but I had no idea about running a business. Um, so she took me under her wing and gave me 12 months of really intense mentoring and coaching. Uh, and from that, I became one of her um, certified consultants because she offers consulting services around the world. Um, and so I established the second business, Pulse Property Management Consulting, and just started getting myself out there networking with other property management agencies and business owners in Australia. Um, I did a little bit of work in New Zealand and I have done a little bit of work over in the States before uh, for an agency and really just helping them with improving efficiencies, looking for gaps in, you know, consistency and income and where we can help them grow and that kind of stuff. Um, and so that's really the focus now is working as a property management business coach um, and trying to give back to the industry that has given me so much over the last 18 years. <laughs> Um, yeah, but, but having this break and doing this, this tour, because I just, I don't know, it fascinates me that we obviously are all working towards a similar goal and similar outcomes, but I'm really intrigued to learn the more intricate side of the differences between how we do things and the different language used and different rules and regulations. And the legislation is fascinating. The differences there, we talked about that the other day. So that's my goal now. Um, I can say as well, I have a little bit of a project going on, which I can't talk too much about because I haven't released it and I haven't mentioned this to you no, yet. No, it's a secret project. It is a secret project. Um, but in the background, uh, since selling, I one of the biggest things I've found and discovered after talking to many property management business owners is in Australia especially, they always seem to struggle with growth. Um, you know, they, they have referral systems in place, they hire business development managers, 
uh, those business development managers may or may not perform. And so growth seems to be an issue. So I am working with a tech company at the moment to develop a lead generation platform. Um, and so essentially, you know, that lead will come in through different channels and different sources where the landlord will answer a, a short questionnaire about, you know, what they've loved about their previous experience, what they didn't like about it, and essentially what they're really looking for in a property manager. And I will have a platform of property management agencies uh, on the platform who are pre-qualified. They're usually, you know, going to be five level of uh, five-star level customer service agencies and using artificial intelligence to cross-match and, and set them up. So, Okay, so now I'm putting together all of the comments you've made <laughs> in the last uh, couple of days that we've been visiting. And for not telling me much about your secret project, I got a little bit out of you there. So yeah. very, very amazing stuff. Um, so you, you've got experience all over the board you're you know continuing to to grow and explore the industry but knowing now what you didn't know back when you were the the kid and the you say the gutter I would say you know on the curb mm -hmm. but however you want to say it <laughs> and you were drawing these houses and you were imagining your future and what you wanted to do um, what advice would you give yourself then? And what advice would you give someone in the stage of uh, just trying to figure it out, just trying to figure out a lane or, or um, you know, how to get into the industry or how to change course in the industry or how to just succeed in the industry? So it's a two-part question. What would you tell yourself when you were the dreaming kid? Mm -hmm. And what would you tell yourself as the um, you know, the, how would you say it? The, uh, the new, but eager, um, newbie. Mm -hmm. So I guess, and it sounds cliche because we, we talk about it so often, but follow your dreams and follow your passion. And if you really do, you know, have a dream and you're passionate about something, uh, and you think you can make it work, then put yourself out there. Um, I haven't always been the most confident person, but I've learned that in order to really get yourself anywhere, you have to put yourself in front of people and you really have to break down your, your barrier of, uh, feeling non, you know, not confident or a little bit nervous about things. Uh, even today doing a podcast, I'm still a little bit nervous, but I'm pushing through, <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, follow your dreams, follow your passion, talk to people, you know, go and talk to people that are in the industry that you want to get into, whatever it might be. If it is property, then great. Surround yourself with people that are in property. And um, I'm not just talking real estate agents. I'm talking people that are mortgage brokers, um, solicitors that deal with property, property sales and contracts, um, talking to banking staff, talking to uh, d developers, um, going and you know, putting yourself out there, talking to builders and asking questions. So never stop learning is probably what I would say and never stop wanting to know more because I've always said when we stop learning or we think we know everything, then it's time to get out of the industry. So because especially in this property industry, it's ever, forever, ever revolving and evolving, um, especially if you look at what's happened in just in the last five to ten years with technology and changes in legislation. So that's probably what I would tell myself uh, back then. And, and I guess it would be the same for a newbie starting out. Um, only thing I would add for the newbie is educate yourself as much as possible. You know, if you really want something, then you need to also invest in yourself because not everyone is going to give you the silver spoon and the platform to, to start. So read about the legislation, read about the market. Um, read as many news articles and stories and audiobooks and listen to podcasts now that we live in the 21st century. That seems to be the new newspaper um, article that we used to read once upon a time. <laughs> and just, you know, immerse yourself in it and never stop learning more because the more you know, the more power, powerful you can be. Um, and I think as well, the more that you'll be able to uh, share and also potentially you know, have more in common when you are then asked talking to people. So you'll be able to relate a little bit better. 
I love what you said. To if you want to do something, follow your passion, follow your dreams, but surround yourself by the people who are doing it. Mm-hmm. And then if that turns into you deciding you want to do something else, surround yourself by those people, mm-hmm. immerse yourself in what they're telling you and sharing, and then just continuously grow and learn and become a better version of yourself. And I, I love what you said there. I couldn't agree more. Mm. Um, so all of these good things, all of these great little nuggets that we're getting from you, uh, what if you could share, what was the biggest mistake you ever made in real estate and what did you learn from that? Well, not to go too dark or deep, but um, the biggest mistake I ever made in the industry was very early on, um, I was working for Harcourt, so I'd been in the industry maybe just over a year. uh, And knowing back then, you know, I'd done my um, real estate certificate, I thought I knew the legislation and had a good understanding about what we could and couldn't do as a property manager. Uh, We had a situation where I we had given a eviction notice to a tenant and started advertising the property. Um, and we put it up and I, you know, organized for an inspection to happen. Uh, I rocked up at the property, you know, probably not overly confident, but feeling pretty confident that, hey, you know, I knew that I'd given you a, a notice of entry and I could come through and do this inspection, uh, but not realizing that the tenant was obviously pissed, excuse my French, but really upset about the fact that we'd given him an eviction notice and here we are going to, you know, wanting to show people through. Um, and I had about six groups, a group of six ready to go. Um, yeah. So I knocked at the door. He answered the door in his underwear with a camera, um, <laughs> which really threw me off. But the, I guess the mistake was it felt wrong and something didn't feel right, but I didn't listen to my gut. And I didn't follow that, you know, that icky feeling of this doesn't feel right, but I'm going in anyway because I know I've done the right thing. (laughs) And I know that I've given you an entry notice and you can't kind of stop me from coming through. So, and I need to show these people. I didn't want to not show them through. So I went in and he let us in and um, put a pair of shorts on and walked around kind of filming us, which I'd asked him to stop. And he was a little bit irate and being a bit difficult. And it was right at the end when uh, I'd just finished and I'd kind of, um, you know, escorted the prospective tenants out of the property down the stairs and I just went to walk out and go down the stairs and the tenant grabbed me by the shoulder, pulled me back inside and threw me to the ground. Uh, He slammed the door shut. Yeah, it was a bit of an eye-opener. Some would say, gosh, you experienced that after a year in the industry and you're still here. (laughs) Um, But it was a lesson, you know. Thankfully, I didn't get severely injured He did kind of bash into me a little bit, but I was yelling and screaming at him to get off me. Um, The door was locked, so the prospective tenants were outside. They could hear everything, but obviously couldn't do anything to stop what was going on, except that I was yelling, you know, call the police, call the police, call the police. So they called the police and yelled back that they had called the police. And it was at that point that he eventually let me up and opened the door and let me out. And I think I was... 22 at the time and full of all this confidence, but came out like a a wreck, you know, a bit teary and shaken with what had happened, Um, all while having to try to hold myself together to be professional. And um, yeah, the police turned up and took a statement and tried to talk to him and he denied everything. And the thing that probably was most annoying was because the door was locked and it was shut. It was his word against mine because no one saw anything, even though they heard it. Um, And he got away with it. There was no charges laid because we couldn't prove anything, even though I was like bruised from head to toe. And I said to the police, you know, do you think I just sat there and punched myself? You know, like these things didn't just appear on me. And um, but the lesson from it was follow your gut, follow your instinct. And if you get that icky feeling that something doesn't feel right, don't go in, don't do it, um, walk away, reschedule. And so it really made me kind of, you know, look at that and go, okay, something on that day was telling me it wasn't right, but my confidence probably got in the way a little bit of saying, you know what, I can be here. You can't stop me from coming through. And so I went through and I paid the price for it, but thankfully I came out the other end and I'm still here 18 years to tell that story. Well, that's, that's true. And wow, I'm sorry that happened to you, but that's a great lesson. And, you know, if, as long as we're 
failing forward. We're not really failing and mm. we don't give up. We're not really failing. So good for you. Mm. Kudos for not letting it scare you away. That's, yeah. Um, wow. That's a crazy story. Um, so as I mentioned, the title of this podcast is We're Invested mm-hmm. and investment can mean so many, you know, different um, endeavors and things. But um, what investments are you focused on right now? And what do you hope to invest more in in the future? Um, So right now, I guess I would say based on what I'm doing, I'm investing in myself, um, my mental wealth and and well-being, Um, investing in my business, you know, taking a bit of a break because I... I'm not going to say I was burnt out after seven years, but I certainly, the last two years with COVID really, uh, you know, took a bit of a toll on the, um, you know, the well-being and and dealing with other people's emotions and evictions and losing their jobs and not being able to pay their rent and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that was a bit of a catalyst for me to kind of reevaluate life at the time. And that's what led me to sell the business and move on. But I also knew that, I had so much more to give back to the industry, you know, and I wanted to not just help the landlords that were my clients that I was working with, but help landlords on more of a national scale across the whole of Australia, um, helping them to improve their experience. And the only way that I could do that was to obviously help improve the standards within the industry and lift everyone's standards and make them all that little bit more professional. Um, so I'm, I'm working on myself, working on the business and, um, yeah, that's what I'm investing in right now. And sometime in the next six to 12 months, I'd say I'm looking to invest in my first investment property. So just last year, I bought my first property, which was great, a, a great milestone and achievement for me personally um, with my husband. And um, we, since selling the business, obviously, I've been able to pay a little bit down on the mortgage, which has been nice. And it's created uh, almost instant equity in the property. I've got about $250,000 available in equity now. So I'm looking to use that and um, to refinance maybe in six to 12 months. I'm just watching to see what the market does a little bit in Australia. Uh, and then I want to buy my first investment property. So um, it's always been a goal of mine to have an investment property, given what I've been doing for the last 18 years working as a property manager. Um, so it's, I guess it's a mixed investment. Myself, the business and future investment is to, you know, buy my first investment property. So I love it. Invest in yourself, mm. your wealth and your future. Exactly. Right? Bravo yeah. to you. Well, thank you so much, Aaron, for being here, for making um, an effort to kind of see how we Americans do things for a couple of days and joining me on this podcast. It's been a real treat to get to know you better And I can't wait to see what you do in your future. I've just, I've loved it so much. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you need to come to Australia. I've got a spare room so we can host you. Oh, thank um, you. Yes, I do. Take you around and show you how we do things over there. I do. I have a cousin who lives in um, in Australia, actually, and I've been needing to get over there. So the second I'm able to make it, I will definitely let you know and we'll get together. Uh, Thanks again so much for joining us on this uh, podcast today. Our podcast is called We're Invested, and I'm Jess Foster with Atrium Management. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time. This podcast was produced by Atrium Management Company. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to like and subscribe.